What's going on, Aztec Nation? We are back. It is final four week, and man, it's already Tuesday on to Wednesday. I am I'm exhausted, but I'm so excited, Fiend. What's up, Fiend? You cannot stop him. You can only hope to contain him. The man, the myth, the legend, Fiend Stradamus. <laughs> What's up, Fiend? What's up, man? I just cannot get my mind off of this next weekend. Final four, baby. Final four mania has hit the fiend, and I just can't freaking wait to get to Houston. Well, we are going to make our way. Everybody listening and watching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff, because we're going to be documenting our trip, our journey, our road to the final four. Me and Fiend, we are definitely heading out to Houston. And a, a lot of Sons of Montezuma crew are going to be out there. So it's going to be a wild adventure, but we are looking forward to it because our Aztecs are in the Final Four playing against FAU. And, you know, we're, we're, we're feeling confident. We're feeling positive, not cocky, but we're, we're feeling good. We're feeling ourselves just a little bit. Just a little. <laughs> well, today we have a very special guest. So, hey, without further delay, let's bring him in. Joining us right now. His name is Kuwaku Omoku. He is a coach, professor, and founder of the AYBO. I did not know he was a professor, man. The professor, <laughs> the African Youth Basketball Organization, Coach Ku. You may know him as he is largely responsible for bringing uh, African youth here into the States and to play. And, of course, Nathan Mensa is the one we are going to talk about today because, man, he has been killing it, killing it in the tournament. He's been dominating in the tournament. Coach Ku, welcome back to the Sons of Montezuma podcast, man. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I didn't know you are a professor, dude. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> just got just started this year, man. Just started this year, man. So oh, I'm hoping that there's, some, there's some jobs I'm applying for, so I'm hoping to get one of these Juco head jobs. So we'll, we'll see what, what happens. What are you, uh, what are you teaching? I, I am in the exercise science, so kinesiology, health, nice. nutrition, uh, physical, all that stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Are you trying yeah. to get like a, a JUCO coaching job? Or are you get, trying to go that? Yeah, way yeah. I've, I've tried for. I, I just actually started because I really wasn't into the coaching side of it. Um, but I've seen kind of an advantage to being a JUCO head coach and being able to bring some other kids that otherwise I wouldn't be able to bring in and try to help. So um, I've, I'm, my name is in the hat. We'll see what happens. We'll nice. see what happens. Beautiful. But it's it's kind of twofold though, right? Because I have to, I'm going to be, uh, you know, being a professor and teaching and stuff like that and hopefully get a head job. But, you know, I got Nathan here about to go professional and that's going to be a lot in itself, you know, trying to make sure everything is going right with him as far as agents yeah. and teams and signings. And yeah. he's going to have a pretty crazy spring coming up here as far as workouts and training and stuff like that. So um, you know, it's, it's kind of double edged, but you know what? I, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's 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 a blast doing all of it. And then That's on awesome. top of all of that, on top of all that, you got Swish League as well. Oh my goodness, San Not Diego, Swish. Arizona, yes. right there in yes, Phoenix sir. as well. I mean, just yes, the, the pro the premier summer basketball league here in San Diego yes, and sir. in Phoenix. Can't forget that, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Make sure we got make sure everybody gets out, especially this year. Especially this year after you got you got. The, a free chance to come out and shake hands and see all the guys, San Diego State guys and all that. Yes, you got it. You gotta, you gotta come out to the Swish, man. We're gonna, we're gonna blow it up this year even bigger than it than it's been. It's gonna be fantastic this year. I'll be out there mopping the floors and doing what I do, man. <laughs> I jump in. I jump right in. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, Fiend's not lying, man. He has a camera and sees, he sees West Spot. He's, he's he gets the mop and he's right out there immediately and it goes right Just back to the camera, man. He don't play around. Injuries to my guys. I'm like, no, no what spots. <laughs> We, I, I'm telling you, I told my guys, I, I think we need to put Fiend on, a, on the payroll because he's out here doing everything, <laughs> filming everything, doing a floor, he does everything for us, man. They're hooking Damn. me up with some, you know, some hot dogs and some, <laughs> some T-shirts and stuff like that. I'm like, uh, yes, sir. That's all yes, I need, sir. man. That's all I need. <laughs> I can't wait, man. I, I, I always look forward to that. It's like, you know, we've talked about this on the show before that there's kind of a lull during the summer, you know, between mm -hmm. when the season wraps up and then the new season starts and. So having that that filler, you know, for 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 hoop heads like myself to yeah. go out, see, um, you know, the, the 
the new new guys on the team and, and how the yep. old guys are developing, but also yep. seeing some of the other players that you know from different um, teams and uh, with you know within the San Diego area. And mm-hmm. you know, one of the guys that I saw play for several years there was Joey Calcaterra. And yeah. guess what? He's going to the yeah. Final Four. Final right. Four, man. Yeah, it's all for you. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, might yeah. see him in the title game. Absolutely. I you know, mean, enjoy so California, I'll, man. Yeah, it's, it's really yeah, cool. He played, I think he played two years with us, those first two years he was out there. So, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So, it's really great what you guys are doing there, developing players and, you know, raising their game. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping it's not a coincidence that, you know, we started this and a lot of the guys who've been through the program and have been playing, uh, you know, I've been having success at the next level. And, you know, I think it does keep them sharp in the summer and you get high level competition and you get to play at home. And especially for the Aztec, you know, kids, they'd be able to play in front of guys like you and the other fans who, you know, follow them and follow the program and have been loyal to the program for years. It's it's a cool thing, right? Like no one knew who Darion Trammell was. And so he played in the program. And that's when people really got their first look. And it's, I'm not surprised the stuff he's doing now. He was doing it all summer in the program. Same with Micah and you know, all these guys. So it's, it's really cool to get them see, to see them translate that into the, this one. And to make this run, man, it's, it's amazing. It's, it was, uh, you know, being there in, uh, in Louisville last week, I, I didn't get to go to Orlando just because of some job restrictions. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a college professor, so it was too hard to, to kind of get off of work, but, um, then playing on a Friday and everything kind of worked out, but I knew when Furman won, I was like, we're going to the Sweet 16 because I had, I just knew we were beating Charleston. But once Furman won that one, I was like, we play we play teams like Furman all year long. So that one I thought was going to be kind of go the way I thought it was going to go. So I honestly started booking my ticket for the Sweet 16. Like I knew we were going to be there. So yeah, it was it was awesome, man. And then just to be there with Nathan and um, you know when they beat Bama, and I don't I don't, people, I don't know if people will understand. Like I don't know if it does justice how enormous and athletic and fast. I mean, that team has easily three NBA players, probably two lottery picks. I mean, they are unbelievably athletic. Um, they're they're pretty well coached. They run their stuff. It's just they ran into a buzzsaw, honestly. But, I mean, that team was absolutely the best physically I've seen with my own eyes, you know, in 20 years of coaching basketball. They were amazingly uh, physical, athletic. And to see what San Diego State did to them, um, you know, just took them completely out of what they normally do. They couldn't get up and down like and you can see it on their face, you know, being there live. You can kind of see it. Alabama was like, oh, you know, they 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 ran into somebody that could punch like them and uh, they, they couldn't really answer it. So it was it was really cool to see, you know, our guys be able to step up and you know play a team like that. And, you know, the way they came together and, you know, they fought through some stuff. It seemed like sometimes the refs were against them and, you know, everything was on them. But, you know, the fans were there were awesome. Uh, the environment was awesome. It was pretty cool, too, that I, uh, about halfway through the game that the gym got filled up with Princeton and Creighton people. And uh, the Princeton fans were all cheering for San Diego State, which was <laughs> awesome. So it got super loud in there when they were when they started winning and stuff like that. So, I mean, the environment is awesome. And, you know, for a kid like Nathan, uh, you know, from where he's from, you know, the humble beginnings he came from to be able to be in that environment and have a key piece of, you know, helping these guys win and seeing everything come back, you know, come to fruition. Like we, when we came back last year, you know, it was a hard decision. You know, he wanted to take care of his family and, um, you know, oftentimes guys come back and, you know, stats suffer. And especially with a team like this, you got nine guys, 10 guys that all play that, you know, the four guys that come off the bench can start anywhere in the country, you know? And so this team to see them do well, because they all sacrifice a piece, you know, Matt Bradley has definitely sacrificed a piece of what he normally does. Nathan has Jaden Ledee could start anywhere. So, I mean, Guys like that, Darion, I mean, guys like that to be able to sacrifice and then see, uh, you know, what they gave up, the sacrifice for their brothers and for their program, and to see them get to the Final Four and, and kind of all that pay off, it's absolutely amazing, man. It really is. It really does talk about the depth of this team, the maturity yeah. of this team. And I know when we had you on during the summer, you know, that was the main the main thing we wanted to talk to you about, right? Because Nathan was mulling over that decision. Do you come back yeah. for that 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 extra, you know, year? And mm-hmm. knowing how deep this team is, I mean, we're talking about the defensive player of the year this year, the former defensive player of the year last year. I mean, he is that <laughs> that anchor there, and one of the anchors of that defense there. When you know you got a big like Nathan, just ready to. I mean, we saw it. We've seen it for this whole tournament run. I mean, blocks, just that imposing presence. And yep. he's it, it's not like he's going against, you know, this is the best of the best in college game right now. He's going Absolutely. against some of the biggest dudes you said at Alabama. 
Now tell yeah. me though, because you know Nathan doesn't do too many interviews, mm -hmm. right? But his stories out there, you know, it, and and to see the emotion after that Alabama game, I love seeing that video him going over to you guys in the stands and just the emotion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's one of the things I'll never forget. You know, that picture that I got, um, somebody took a picture with all of us in there and, you know, it's something I'll frame it because it was just, it was so organic, right? Like I, yeah. I couldn't, I was losing my mind in the stands and I actually was about five rows up with about six minutes to go. I kept getting in a row closer, <laughs> sneaking up, sneaking up. Cause I was like, we're going to do this. He didn't know that we had made our way down there. So you can see he looks at us and the way he just jumped over that the bench <laughs> and came running to his man. And I was like, and he just jumped into the stands. It was like, it was just, one of the greatest things for me feeling wise, um, you know, I'll never ever forget that because, you know, what he's gone through, you know, he's lost his mother, hasn't been home to see his family in nine years since I brought him here. Um, you know, we're his family. Right. And, and it, it kept, along with, you know, the, the, the multiple host families that he's had, um, you know, through the years when he, whether he was up at uh, prolific prep or whether he's been down here in Southern California, um, you know, all these people have had a piece of it and they've all are a piece of his family, but, you know, for me, he's like a son, you know, and I, I have treated him like a son. We, we talk like to each other, like father, son. Um, you know, I have a daughter and I don't have any other boys. All the boys I have are my basketball kids that I, that I help coach and raise. But yeah, he, my, the AYBO kids are different because, you know, they come here, um, they, they leave their families, their families trust them to come here to be with us. Um, so to see him jump over there and run to us, how, with how excited he was and jump into our arms and hugging us and all that stuff. It was, uh, it's one of the things I will never, ever forget, man. Never in my entire life. Like it's, it's, it was amazing. It really was, man. So, and I'm, and I, again, I'm just so elated for him, um, to, for what he's gone through to be able to, to experience that and to be there, um, was priceless for sure. Yeah, you know, I think for all these guys that made that decision to come back, I don't think any of them now would would say that they regret that decision. You know, I mean, it's totally, totally worth it to come back and have this experience, not only to win in the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, but now to get to the Final Four. I mean, that that that's like you said, it's it's a priceless experience that you'll cherish forever. And those guys all made the right decision. Um, you know, to come back to San Diego State. And Absolutely. we've been just been so blessed with as fans to be on this journey with them, you know, yeah, and to, to share that with them. And, uh, you know, real shout out to you guys like yourself and guys like P. Scott, you know, who have yep. really have had a huge influence and, you know, fingerprints on this team as far as the training and all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes you know okay. um all year long because the improvement that guys have made you know throughout the year is just yeah. uh it's just awesome and you know coach said that you know if we win everyone's boat rises you know and everyone's yes. boat is rising in Absolutely. this run i mean you look at the ratings for all the people that are watching these games yeah yeah and it's 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 amazing but that is going to help everyone's stock when it comes to getting pro you know um yes looks from pros and and whatnot i mean it's funny you said the ratings too because I've, I've seen some you know i've seen some of the chatter and social media and all those platforms and you know people are upset oh there's no blue bloods there's no there's no superstars there's no <laughs> this there's no that and it's like you know what um you know eight something million people watched that bama game you know or eight whatever million watched the creighton game you can say whatever you want at the end of the day basketball is basketball and as far as the blue bloods and the high level players and all that stuff that's disrespectful to guys like San Diego, to teams like Creighton, FAU. All those guys are high-level players. The problem is these pundits and all these scouts and all these people who rate all these kids one through 100 when they're in eighth grade or ninth grade or 10th grade, they missed. They missed on these guys who are now seniors, juniors, seniors, whatever. Those guys are good players, and they are high-level players, and they are superstar players. But just because they didn't have the high-level, I went to the McDonald's All-American game on your name, all of a sudden, now you, you the, the the word goes out as if these guys aren't pros, and it's just it's so false that it's it's insane. But that's that's part of the media, that's part of you know social media and how that works and all that stuff. And I get it, um, but I, I just feel like it's disrespectful to guys like AG, to guys like Adam, to guys like Nathan, guys that put their time in for years to get better, got better, and just because they weren't didn't come out of high school like, hey, I'm supposed to go to the NBA after one year. What does that mean? Because there's a lot of guys who right now 
thought they were good enough to go to the NBA and after one year and are sitting in Europe in the G League and toiling and can't get out. And these guys have all done things that are absolutely excellent. Like, I, I, for me, Nathan not going to – not being a high-level guy or supposedly high-level guy and, you know, having to go through four or five years of college. The kid got his degree. He's working on his master's degree. These kids that are right now in Europe or wherever – they, they dropped out of school early. They're not, they don't have that backup. They don't have those things. So they have to sit there and take 36,000 to go play in the G league and go do this and, you know, not be able to, to live out what they want to do. Nathan doing this, got his degree. He's about to get his, he's going to, he's going to work on his masters, um, you know, after he's done. And like you said, every guy's stock on his team has, has, has risen, especially all the seniors. Like, you know, Nathan was a fringe guy. And right now, you know, I'm sure the buzz has gone up for him. And I'm sure the buzz has gone up for Matt and for Jaden and for all these guys because they came back and they sacrificed. And it, you know, kind of reminds me of when Anthony Davis was on that Kentucky team that won. You know, they wouldn't let him shoot threes. He, there's a lot of things he sacrificed from his game to be able to be on that team to, so he could be a shot blocker, rebounder, dunker, felt that win, team win a, a you know a national championship. But he's the number one overall pick. So at the end of the day, these guys at the next level, this is their job. Um, you know, they know what they're doing. It's not, it's a little bit different than college where the portal has kind of taken over and made guys um you know, I don't want to I don't want to say coaches made them lazy, but it's kind of made it to where they can take the easy route, just go get older. And yeah. if it doesn't work, you cut them and go do it again the next year and try to get older. And, you know, one of those job, one of those kids is going to hit and hopefully you guys win. Right. But at the next level, these scouts understand, you know, guys sacrifice their game, they sacrifice certain things for winning. And that to me is the most important thing than a guy who scores 20, like somebody who's willing to sacrifice what they have to do for their program. I mean, to me, that says more about being professional than anything else you could possibly tell me. So, you know, just me being in a game for 20, you know, 20, 30 years as a coach and player and all that stuff, you know, as a coach, I, I want guys like that. I want guys who are willing to sacrifice for the better of the team because those guys are going to be better pros. They're going to move on, but it it sets a, to a, a tone and a culture for the program. And that's what Dutch and those guys have done. And these guys, these seniors especially, have carried that on unbelievably, man. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a funny thing when they say, like, oh, there's no blue bloods and this is going to be the worst Final Four ever. I've been reading stuff like that, and I'm like, How, how's this? The, what are you guys talking about? Like, there's a team in it that's 30 and 6. One team over there has another 30 wins. Like, how do you win 30 games and you're not an elite team? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's craziness to say that. So it's just disrespectful, and, you know, I hope these guys go out there and show the world exactly what they have, and it, as they have already. But, you know, I just – uh I'm excited for all of them. And, you know, I, I try to let all that negative stuff kind of slide by, but, you know, I just had to say something on that. Cause it's just unbelievable how these, how the, how the people, you know, he's not a five-star. He didn't, he wasn't in the McDonald's game. I saw a stat the other day that said there's no McDonald's, McDonald's games, all American, McDonald's player, all Americans or whatever. Right. In, in the game. Right. And I'm like, okay, well that says more about the McDonald's game than it does about college <laughs> basketball. <laughs> you, you guys missed. That's on, yes, yes, your fault. Uh, don't blame the kids. That's not their fault. These guys did their job and got better. So, I'm proud of yeah. all of them. Every last one. Yeah, we, you know, the, uh, being a media company, I mean, we see it. You know, there's yeah. there's an inherent bias against the mid majors. I mean, whenever yep. you we pull up, listen to these podcasts by these national guys, they're all, all they want to talk about is the Dukes and North Carolinas yep. and the yep. you know powerhouses in the Big Tens and the Kentuckys. Yep. They could care less about the mid majors, and so while you know we're here, we're not going to win away. Absolutely. And, uh, no. nope. you know, if you don't want to watch it, don't watch. But I, I bet they will. Watch, right? I bet they will. <laughs> oh, they'll watch. They'll watch. I've, I mean, I've seen everything from, oh, uh, this isn't a good brand of basketball because they play defense. And I'm like, isn't basketball offense and defense? Like, what are you, what are you guys talking about? If you want to just see offense, you know, I heard slam balls coming back. You can just watch that, I guess. Like, I don't understand, like, <laughs> what you guys are talking about you know what i mean like it's just i hate it when people say this it's like when the baltimore ravens won in 2000 it was like oh well they just won because of their defense they won you know what i mean it's like what are we talking about here so i yeah, was I'm, I'm just thinking about that analogy today i was thinking then yeah. we're like the 85 bears or yes. the, the 2000 yes. ravens you know yes. i mean and it's beautiful it's beautiful to watch beautiful. absolutely you know, i love absolutely. those teams because they played such great defense that's what Absolutely. And I hope what it does is it makes it makes all these other cult schools kind of change. So, you know, that's what usually happens. The team wins and everybody wants to start some copycat start like, OK, this is how they did it. I hope it changes because basketball needs to get back to basketball. You know, it's a lot of get up and down. Look, sometimes these college games look like AAU games, you know, and so to see 
real basketball, guys playing hard on both ends of the floor, diving on the floor, helping each other, you know, moving on a string together. Like that's that is what the game is supposed to look like. And San Diego State does it the right way. I don't care what anybody says. So, you know, Dutch and those guys have done a phenomenal job and these players have done a phenomenal job just understanding that. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's been it's been an amazing ride, man, an amazing ride. So I, I hope I hope we're going till Tuesday. And if we do go to Tuesday or Monday, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, you guys may not see me for a while. <laughs> Well, we'll see you in Houston because we will be there representing awesome. something on a Zoom and we will be there. Yes, sure. sir. We are not missing this thing. The first time <laughs> ever for San Diego yeah. State. I mean, yeah. I grew up in the days of playing at the sports arena, Peterson Gym. Yeah. What You know, Michael Cage was like right before my era. But, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, man. I'm a kid of the 90s. Like 90s ball in the NBA was that was tough basketball. That man. was, tough. That was 80s, 90s. It was I mean, you grinded out, you played defense, you muscled up. Yes. You actually had a yes. mid range, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yes, yeah. <laughs> tell me this, though. Tell me this because the college game and basketball in general has gone through so many changes this last decade. Mm -hmm. The college mm -hmm. ball game now, I think you're hitting onto it a little bit, you know, as far as transfer portal, NIL, um, you know, one and duns. Um, you know, I feel like some people may not like it because, you know, right, you got to get adjusted to change. But with the NIL right. coming in, with the one and duns, I mean, yeah, these these blue bloods may continue to get these McDonald's All American, you know, five stars, whatever players, but they're going to be one and done most yep. of the time. So yep. a lot of times, I think we are going to see more teams like a San Diego State to be able to take advantage and and find that niche where you have the more mature players, a more well rounded Absolutely. team. Because yep. the Blue Bloods, yeah, you're gonna shoot for those rising stars right off the bat that have all the all the hype, but yep. they're gonna be gone after one year. And in that freshman Absolutely. year, you better be good enough to beat a mature team that that yep. locked in and knows their scheme. That they're yep. more you know athletic, all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I know growing up, I've always, you know, you, I'm sure you guys have heard it too, grown man strength, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got a 22-year-old grown-ass man and against a 19-year-old kid, I don't, NBA or not, yeah, know, it's going to be different, you know what I mean? So, and, it, it, you know, Brandon Miller was three for 19. It's not like Brandon Miller is not going to be a top five pick. He's, he is that good. But yeah. like you said, you're playing against guys who have been in their scheme. They've been in a program for four or five years. They've gone through those things. They've gone through trials and tribulations. They've seen a lot. And a lot of people, you know, don't understand, like, a lot of these guys, you know, I, I mean, I don't even know exact numbers, but a lot of those guys um, that have influence on this team were on that 30-2 and two team. And right. that was a hell of a team. And so yeah. they they learned how to win. They went through games. They did all that. So they brought that in, and they brought these the new guys in. So cultures like that definitely – um, I agree with you, are, are going to step up more. And there's going to be more San Diego States and FAU, 100%, 100%, because they're going to go get transfer guys. They're going to get guys who are three, four years older, a guy who maybe was at a, a you know, a Missouri Valley school and averaged 18 is going to come in and can step right in and play right away. And um, so I definitely think, um, you know, the days of the Blue Bloods are, I'm not going to say over, right. but with the way this current system is going, um, it's evened up the playing field to where, you know, these coaches have to have to kind of look at, at themselves a little bit and say, hey, look, is it worth it to go get, you know, the prima donna five star who has to start when he comes in, isn't going to grind it out. If he doesn't get what he wants, he's going to leave uh, and go try to find another school who's going to just give him what he wants. You know, and again, it all falls back to, you know, typical, um, you know, the AAU culture. And that's just kind of how this it is. And it's kind of carrying over now. And the teams who don't have that and who stick together and kind of grind it out a little bit like San Diego state, um, you know, those teams are going to see benefits, you know, more and more down the line. So I'm, I'm excited for San Diego state to be able to show that. Um, Cause there's, you know, I remember back in the day it was, you know, when Shane Battier came out and it was like, Oh, well, how good is he going to be? He was in school for four years or Grant Hill. How good is he going to be? He was in school for four years. Like it was almost like a bad thing right. to be in school for four years. Like you weren't good enough. And it's like, when then Duncan was there for three years. You know what I mean? Like it just, it's just crazy how, things have completely flipped because everything is instant gratification off of, you know, and I mean, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just, it's good to see kids doing it the right way, going through adversity, going through stuff. I mean, you guys know Nathan's story, Nathan, you know, damn near almost died, you know, mm -hmm. when he had the embolism and all that stuff happened to him and to go from that to this now, yeah. we had to grind it out. And, you know, a lot of these kids did Adam had to grind it out. AG was, injured wasn't practicing ever because he was, his body was so broke down and to see him perform like he's performed and this tournament is amazing man to see guys like that so it's just good to see kids go through that and this is what these are why these guys are going to be successful 
in life moving forward because they understand adversity. They can deal with that adversity. They've seen it. Um, and they, they, they're they grinders. And uh, so it's uh, – I'm, I'm proud of every last one of these guys, man, because it's, it's a really cool thing. I mean, you know, as a parent, for sure, I, it, it's uh, it's good to see that, you know, kids can, can handle that. So it's awesome. For sure, for sure. I mean – you talk about the the guys that were on that 30 and two team being the foundation of this team. And um, it, it's yeah. great to see some of those players from that 32 team, you know, talking about the guys today. And um, one of the, one of the, I don't know if you saw the tweet from Jordan Shackle, but it's one of my favorite tweets I've seen uh, last couple of days. He was mm-hmm. talking about after the Alabama game. Um, he said, one thing about Aztec men's basketball defense, it's so hard to score in practice. I had to come home some days and contemplate if I wanted to go back the next day. <laughs> I know I know the feeling the guards were feeling yesterday and the whole tourney. It's exhausting playing against them. And then I think Miles Bird, he retweeted his tweet and he said, Scout team know that feeling made me hate yeah. basketball. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it's and that's, 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 that's the awesome. truth, that's that you know. You don't know yeah. what you're getting. And we warned, hey, we warned people. We warned people on Twitter, you know, like at before that Alabama game, like you don't know what you're getting into. You, oh, yeah. These guys take it to yeah. a whole nother level on defense. Absolutely. And so I, I know I, I remember telling everybody all week. I had I just I knew I was like, we're gonna beat Alabama. I have a feeling I watched I watched them play that first game or that second round game. I was like, we're going to win this game. And I was like, they, Alabama's a good team, but there's no one in their conference that is, that is, they've seen that is like this team. There's no one. And that, and that went for Creighton as well, too. And the Big East is a great conference, but there's no one in those conferences that play defense as physically as these guys do, man. So, like you said, you think you know what it is when you watch it on film until you see it live and feel those, the force from these kids. You don't, you don't, you know, it, it kind of catches you off guard for sure. So, yeah. And, and, the, and like you said, the, the foundation for these guys, Jordan's a funny kid. Too. I, I actually saw Jordan in Louisville and we talked and I was like, man, this is for, you know, after everything happened and we were on the floor and guys are cutting down the nets and confetti's falling and everything. And I, I turned to Jordan and I was like, man, this is for you guys, the whole 30 and two team. And he said the coolest thing to me ever, man. He's such a great kid. He said, this is better than that. So this is, this is better than the 30 and two team, you know, and just to hear him say that about his guys and his team, and his coaches, and he immediately, and it was no hesitation in it. He immediately said, like, this is way better than ever winning that championship to be here for that. Wow. So it was, uh, it just shows how good these kids are, man. They're good kids. They're great kids, actually. And they come from good homes. Um, and you guys said something earlier, too, that I want to touch on, too, with, you know, you mentioned guys like Phil, uh, Phil Scott, and, you know, other guys who have been behind the scenes kind of with these kids uh, that yeah. no one knows about, you know, like myself and Phil and Howard and all these different guys. Um yeah, they come from great families, man. They're the parents, the the trainers, the coaches that come with them that are in the stands. Um, they're all really, really nice, genuinely nice, truly great people. Um, and so that helps, you know, that you go back to that, man. Like that's that's it goes from top to bottom, right? Like coaches all the way down to these these kids and their families and things like that. It's just it's a great time to be an Aztec, man, as far as the basketball program goes, because everybody in the program that's associated with the program. They're just good people. And, uh, you know, like I've always been told, I've always said, you know, good things happen to good people. So you know, I feel like this is this is their turn and this is their time. And for everybody, not just what the kids are sacrificing, the coaches, but what these parents have you know, put into it as well, too. And trainers and all that stuff. You know, they're all good people and they're all in it for the right reasons, which is why, you know, I feel like things are happening this way. That seems to be the common theme for sure is that. Exactly. You know, it's the quality of of the culture that's been built throughout these decades, yeah. you know, starting with Steve Fisher and now on to Dutcher and yeah. carrying it on. And, and just that tree, that coaching tree, the player tree. I mean, how unselfish for 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 a guy like Jordan Shackle to say that. I mean, just just a beautiful oh, yeah. it's a beautiful sentiment for his teammates. And man, absolutely. Absolutely. Any any insight at all before we let you go on FAU? I know they got a big man there, a big uh, – well, he's a seven-foot Russian. I want to pronounce his name. Yeah. Vladislav Golden. Goldin? Yeah. Goldin. Seven, Goldin. one, two, forty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a sophomore from Russia. This is going to be another big-time matchup for Nathan. I mean, he's gone through yeah. – a gauntlet here and he's come out just yeah. very impressive 
Very impressive. <laughs> you know, you know who that guy reminds me a lot of is Yanni Wetzel. I don't know if you've watched tape on him, but he yeah. moves like Yanni Wetzel. So That's a I'm good hoping, yeah, I'm hoping that you know Nathan because he's played against Yanni. Uh, yeah, yeah, might feel a little more comfortable playing against that guy. Yeah, no, I think he'll be fine. I think um, it's kind of cool that you know these last two games, especially for the Sioux Sixteen and the Elite Eight, um, he's got to see kind of two different styles of centers, right? Like Bidiaco and uh, Clowney. Um, they're the more athletic rim runners, that type of thing. They're not back to basket guys, particularly. Uh, Clowney's more of a guard, almost like he shoots threes and things like that. Yeah. And when Nathan had to match up on Brandon Miller, who's you know six ten. That was all perimeter, right? Um, and then after that, he goes from that game and having to guard one through five on the perimeter and guard these super athletic long guys and then <laughs> flip it and you play Kalka Brenner, who's 7'1", like 240, 250. I mean, he's a big dude. <laughs> yeah. He's humongous. And to see Nathan take that every single time, blocking his shots on post-ups and things like that. So it's good to know, like, I feel confident that he's going to be fine against this kid. Um, I, I think it'll be... I think it'll be more an adjustment for that guy, um, kind of seeing Nathan's length, because you don't really understand how how big he is and how long Nathan is until you're up against him and you think you have a shot, and all of a sudden this, you know, stretch arm and, and big old hand and, you know, Paul comes out and knocks the ball out the sky. Um, I think it'll be more of an adjustment for him. Um, but, again, they have two really good guards. The Greenlee kid is really good. Uh, Elijah Martin is a stud. Um, so it, it's going to start with, Lamont and Darion kind of bothering them, getting in those guys, you know, uh, bothering and, and kind of just harassing them and funneling them to Nathan. And then at that point, it'll kind of be what the Aztecs do. But the good thing um, with this team is it's not like Nathan has to be, he'll have his opportunities where he'll be one-on-one, -on -one, but for the most part, they, they, they do five to stop the ball, right? Like all five of those guys are engaged, know exactly where they should be know how to rotate and they all are five they're, they they look at it as their job to stop the ball together um so I, I think the fau game will be a good game i think they are a really good team uh guard wise they have the one big but again in that conference that they're in i just don't think that they've seen the physicality um and the grit that san diego state has i mean these guys can execute in the half court they can get up and down uh they can play defense in the half court they can play defense full and i just think 40 minutes of that with you know, then when you come off the bench and you got you take out Nathan and you put in, you know, Jaden, who basically should be playing in the NFL, but has basketball <laughs> yeah. skills and you got to deal with that, you know. So and then you got AG who's bouncing around everywhere. You don't even know, where, you know what I mean? So I just think I just think the depth um, is just going to wear them down, honestly. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm looking at. And these guys, I think they're I think I honestly think uh, that semifinal game is going to be a fantastic game. Um, you know, of course, we're going to win it, but uh, I feel like we're going to show out in that game to, to be ready for, for Monday, for sure. I, I certainly like the matchup because I think our guards are just shutting down the other team's best guards, which yes. really, you know, yes. is a big plus in our, in our favor. And, you know, that that whole switching thing that you talk about, I mean, it, it, it's only as you're only as strong as your weakest link. Right. And yep. usually on those switches, mm -hmm. either your, your your weakest link is either your point guard or your center. But mm -hmm. because, you know, be, uh, getting matched up on center, getting matched up on smaller yep. guards. But, yep. I mean, Ma Nathan is really making himself a lot of money showing his mm -hmm. defensive versatility yeah. in this tournament. I mean, we all knew yes. about it. We all knew yeah. he, can, right. he can guard <laughs> small guards on the perimeter and not let them blow past him. Right. But now he's showing that to the world. Yes. And I think that is going to he, he's going to earn a lot of money because uh, that is sort of his calling card. Just that defense. Oh, yeah. versatility. And yeah, um, I, I, I I like this matchup. I, I think. Hey, we took down Alabama. I mean, I'm not going to get <laughs> arrogant here, say, you know, but we, we got a shot against anyone. And, and these Absolutely. guys. I mean, I just think we, we match up well again. I know they got a lot of depth, but so do we. And so that's that's so not going to yeah. be a, uh advantage for them. So, but I, I don't want to get too cocky. I mean, I don't, you know, I think it is going to be a tough game. They're, they're, you don't get to the Final Four by being um a chump. You know, they're, they're, yeah. they're no. gritty. They're resilient, too. Yeah. Um, And yeah. they've had to overcome, you know, the – 
the things that they've had to do to get to where they're at. So it, it's yep. going to be a tough yep. game, no doubt. Um, but I'm. Oh yeah, I'm I mean they 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 they're very similar to San Diego State. I mean they've had a chip on their shoulders all year because yeah they've been a good team all year. And I've been hearing about Florida Atlantic all year long, but they they barely cracked the rankings just because they're Florida Atlantic. No one knows who they are. So um, they're definitely coming in with a chip on their shoulder, which is exactly what San Diego State is. So I agree with you 100. percent It's like you know I believe we're going to win that game um, and get to Monday, but it's definitely going to be a dog fight. They're going to bring everything they got. Um, but I just think this team is on a mission, man. And this is this is their time. You know what I mean? And just sometimes as good as you might think you are, you are. Sometimes it's just not your time. And uh, I think this is San Diego State's time. And Florida Atlantic, you know, had a great season and all that stuff. But I just feel like um, they're running into a team that is determined on a mission and connected all over the place. Like they're just they're friends. And you can tell it when they're on the floor. Uh, when they're at practice, when they're on the on the bus, like anywhere you see them, they're all connected. And uh, I think that chemistry um, is what kind of brings them to that one goal, which is win, which is why they all sacrifice pieces of their game, um, you know, to make sure that the team does what they're supposed to do. And that's I feel like in the end, that's going to carry us to a championship is that these guys genuinely love each other. They're genuinely happy to see each other succeed. Um, and they're genuinely uh, happy to play for each other, which, you know, I've been in college basketball a long time. It's a rare thing, man. Like you can put a bunch of five stars together and it doesn't matter because if they don't like each other or they genuinely are selfish people and don't care about their teammate or their brother being successful, it's not going to work. And this, these guys care about each other um, being successful. So, and it's good to see that, you know, from that, they, their stocks individually um, are all rising and, you know, to see that they, they can, They'll, they'll be able to physically see that in front of them. Like, hey, you know, I did this for the team. I sacrificed. I'm not averaging as many points as I did last year. Or I'm not averaging as many rebounds or whatever it is, or in Nathan's case, rebounds or blocks or whatever. But they know. You can just look at the team. You can see how they play. You can see how they play for each other. They sacrifice for winning. And you want people like that in your program, whether it's college or professional. You, you want guys like that around. You want winners. And winners do whatever it takes to win games. And I feel like that's what these guys are. You know, they've been winning games – you know, I, I know that stat. I know that stat is out there where you know we're, um, you know, top five as far as win percentage over the last you know so many whatever years. That's that's not a mistake. You know what I mean? Like Dutch and these guys have done a great job of you know having these guys be selfless and play for each other, and you know that that it just keeps translating to where they are now. So um, yeah, it's it's uh we're excited over here for sure. And I know people in Ghana. Um, you know, kind of to, to tangent off that people in Ghana are so happy. You know, I was getting, okay. getting text messages and phone calls. Like, you know, he's doing it. He's doing the whole country proud. It's like, I try not to sell Nathan that. Cause I just don't want, he has enough pressure on him already, but I don't want him to feel like he has the entire pressure, the, the entire country of Ghana on his back, but they definitely are behind him on this. One, man. So it's a really cool thing to see that as well too, that he's making everybody back home proud. Oh, that's awesome to hear, man. That is awesome to hear. Well, Coach Koo, man, we appreciate your time. I, I think that that's, that's some great stuff, man. I'm so I'm so glad. That's some great stuff. I mean, to like I said, to see that that outpouring of emotion after that Alabama game, and to see it roll through on against Creighton to get the the one point victory, a tough game. But man, we're so happy and yeah. proud to see Nathan just perform on the big stage, and and you know all the sacrifice, all the dedication, the hard work. It, it's it's showing for everyone to see, man. Coach, we appreciate you joining, man. Thank you. We'll see you in Houston. Let's right. We definitely got to do this again and, uh, you know, have a little chat out there yeah. in Houston. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely got to get together in Houston, man. I, I appreciate you, Tay. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Fiend, I really appreciate you guys. You have no idea what you guys mean to us, man. And, nice. um, you know, with everything, with, you know, the, 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 the shop and, you know, the, these, these interviews and with you guys just giving as much love as you guys give to Nathan, whether it's social media, you got to hear you guys talking about him. Like, it's, uh, we really appreciate everything you do, not just for Nathan, but, for in, in the program but for san diego man because you, you, you bring it you bring it all together bro you know and you guys are are fantastic i love seeing you guys in the summer i love seeing Fiend every time when when Fiend is in the gym in the summer i know there's a big game coming he's there all the time when he shows up early he got that camera he's got that camera that tripod out i'm like oh yeah it's big this is big one. he's coming to film some guys he was over there getting scouted he had film on on darion and micah before anybody did he already had film posters and everything I did. I, I had the full scouting report on him. Yeah, no, I like to get a jump start, you know. I love That's what it. us hoop heads do, do in the summer, you know, so. Yes, yes. I just want to thank you guys, man, for being true to this, man, because like I said, there's a lot of people out there in this media game that are, you know, they're they're not in it for the right reasons, and 
you guys genuinely are, man. And you're gen you're in it for these kids, you're in it for the city, the school. Um, so I appreciate you guys unbelievably, man, for real. A lot of love for you guys. Yeah, we'll see you in Houston. We get in uh, on Friday, so we'll definitely yep. have to meet up with we'll you. We'll be there Friday. We'll definitely link up, try to link up before that game for sure. All right, sounds good. Like I said, you know, what we were talking about, I mean, you know, the guys behind the scenes, yeah, some some are doing it for you know for a living, right? Sure. Or the you know for the because that's their their vocation. But I mean, they're not getting rich off that, you know. No. I mean, they're they're doing it because they 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 love the kids and they want to you know impart that that those skills and that wisdom that they've learned, you know, onto a new generation. And um, those guys behind the scenes deserve a lot of credit because they don't get the limelight, you know, and they, they probably they they won't you know it's gonna go to the it's gonna go to the players you know and the coaches um you know having the success but those guys who, who put in countless hours i mean you look at the transformation of guys like lamont look at his game from one from you know last year to this year and um Kishad and um you know darian's really picked up his game and and nathan and i mean adam all these guys you know and, um they had good good mentors in the off season, you know, leading them and helping them develop their skills. It's all about creating those opportunities, man. And you know what? I've totally goofed on my opportunity. I didn't share with Coach Koo that man, that Nathan Mensa Mania shirt that I've been wearing <clears throat> is the reason why we've been winning all these games. Because every time I wear it, we don't lose we just win so you watching right now you listening right now make sure you go check out the sons of montezuma online shop where we have an nil short couple shirts for nathan mensa you can go support him directly uh as we said you know he can't really earn nil revenue actively but he can passively so that t-shirt is the perfect way that you can support him Fiend, let's pick this up back again tomorrow, man. We'll have another episode for people to listen to and, you know, get get a little bit more in-depth on FAU, talk some uh, Aztecs defense and how we're going to come away with the victory and make it to the national championship game where we'll play, who knows, Miami or UConn. We'll see. All right. Yeah. Sound good? I'm excited to break it down, man. All right. We'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Sons of Montezuma.com. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. I got you. Go Aztecs. Bars in our court and we ain't dropping it. Blood, sweat, tears, bro. Ain't no stopping it. With team on three and family on six. And when you hit done, it all means this. We game time ready. Welcome to my gym where the crowd stays heavy.